But before we get started, uh, I can't remember who I asked to do prayer last time. Richard, you care to lead us in a word of prayer? Yes, sir. Uh, let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for our time on this earth. We thank you for our lives and uh, thank you for your word and your son, your son Jesus, who died for us that we we can have remission of our sins and that we can be counted worthy one day, Heavenly Father, to be with you and pray that we stay on that straight and narrow path and always look look to you and your son and and to keep keep your word in our hearts and to be humble people to treat other people as we would have them to treat us and to love them and pray that you forgive us of any sins that we have committed against you and thankful for the ones that are here tonight that are listening on on these devices that we have nowadays that we can discuss your word and to be, better understand it heavenly father and we pray that you bless each and every one of us tonight and the ones that are in the church of christ at catholicsburg that are not with us we we pray for our other members that you would be with them and and help them, Heavenly Father, through this life that they they can finish the race and that we can all be together with you one day. And pray that you be with Brother Lyas as he has studied the lesson and that uh, he presents it, presents it in such a way that we can better understand and we can learn from your word, Heavenly Father. And just watch over and guide us and and also be with uh, the Hicks family as they mourn the loss of of a mother and a grandmother and a great grandmother and and we pray that you would watch over over that family and comfort them. As we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you didn't get a chance to read the obituary, <laughs> Ruby had 47 grandchildren and great grandchildren. Yeah, I read that. 47. I, I, that's just amazing to me. And all that from just six children. So you, see, you figure six children and children and great grandchildren, you're talking about a bunch of kids. Yeah. And six children. So. Well, Flo had six, and she only had about ten grandchildren. Well, there's, uh, I don't know exactly the number of grandchildren, children. I'd have to add it up in my head. But mom's on. She buys Christmas gifts for everybody in the family: children, grandchildren, and great grandchildren. And she buys twenty-seven gifts. Yeah. So, and I know at least six of those are for her children and and, and their wives. Yeah. So you know, she don't have a near like near like Ruby had. Right. About thirty five. You got you got thirty five. All together with the kids and the spouses and the grandchildren and the great grandchildren. Well, that's great. Three boys. Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> I only got three grandchildren, and no great grandchildren yet. You don't want any great grandchildren? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, the oldest one's just sixteen, so I hope he ain't ready for that. Exactly. We got a long way to go. Yeah. Yeah. But our, our Bible lesson tonight, we're going to be looking at the the source and standard of authority. Now, the scripture that I told you we're going to start on, we started on last week. Uh, we're going to be on that scripture a lot of times, and there's a lot of other scriptures that we'll repeat quite often. We're not going to. Uh, the authority only stays in the New Testament is what we're going to look at. Of course, we'll look some at the New Testament, Old Testament, because it's important to us too. Um, this is probably the single biggest problem in religion today. Understanding authority. If you don't understand authority, you can't understand anything else about the Bible. You'll be <laughs> lost going through our trying to study if you don't understand the authority and put it in the right place. First of all, think about it. 
there's only two sources of authority. And the scriptures tell us that. There's only two available sources, and one is right and one is wrong. They can't both be right. That's just like we've talked before, and Calvin has mentioned the fact you could both be wrong. You could both be wrong. If you disagree, you can't you could both be wrong, but you can't both be right. And Calvin said that several times, and, and that's what it comes down to. So if your authority for what you do as far as a Christian goes uh, comes from the wrong source, then you're going to have the wrong information. Let's look at what those two sources are. In Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse 23, it says, And when he was coming to the temple, uh, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, Now Jesus comes in and he begins to teach. Well, they want to confront him. They want to try to prove him wrong. And uh, they said, by what authority does thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? Well, it says, and Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which if you tell me, and likewise uh, will tell you what authority I do these things. In other words, he's going to ask them now, by what authority do they go by? Verse 25, he said, the baptism of John. Which was it, from heaven or from men? Right there, we have our two sources of authority, either man's authority or God's authority. Either it's from heaven or it's from men. That's the only two choices we've got. And they reasoned themselves saying, if we say from heaven, Richard Moon's coming back. If we say from heaven, he will say unto us, uh, why did you not then believe him? But if we shall say from men, of men, we fear the people. For all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, uh, we cannot tell. And he said unto them, neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. So they wasn't able to tell. So Jesus refused to tell them or give them an answer. In other words, he's not going to answer unless they're willing to answer his. But look at the two basis of authority I believe it's either heaven or god it's god or men yeah. and we have to make that choice now how do we figure out what comes from god and what comes from men the bible do what the bible that's it right there uh the bible if, mm -hmm. if you're going that this is a thing that that really bothers me uh and i think about it a lot of times people say they want to go to heaven well, who's who's in, who created heaven? God. Who's in control of heaven? God. They want to go to heaven, but they want to go to heaven by man's standards, mm -hmm. by what they want to do. And and that's just not a possibility. Man's wisdom, if you really think about it, the wisdom of man is an enslaving wisdom. It's an empty and deceptive wisdom. Uh, they don't ever have anything to back that with. It's just their opinions on things. In the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8, Paul wrote. Now, listen to how he said this. He said, beware lest any man spoil you. What is something that is spoiled? Bad, gone bad. It's rotten. Yeah. And when your milk's spoiling, it's because it's rotting. When you're, if you have hamburger or something like that in your refrigerator and it's full, it's because it's rotting. So think about that. Be wireless man, watch you. In other words, that's not going to go to heaven. It says through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiment of the world, and not after Christ. We've got a problem. Does Paul not mention doing the traditions? Colossians 2 and 8. Uh, think about it. When man's traditions are used, is it okay to use a man-made tradition? According to what it is. Yeah, yeah it depends. Like, like Brother Calvin says, it, it depends. What it is. Okay, Calvin's absolutely right. It depends. 
If it conflicts with God's raw, God's rules, we cannot use man's tradition. And we cannot teach a tradition of man and say that it's a, it's a commandment of God. An example of that, communion. We partake of it as one of the first things we do. We take care of, partake of it before we do a sermon. What if we done it after we done a sermon? It wouldn't be all right. It would be all right. Yeah. Be all right. Uh, <laughs> we also teach that it's okay in communion of the Lord's Supper uh, because when it talks about the cup, it's talking about what's inside the cup. So we use different containers in, with, with the use of our, our communion. Do we demand that everybody use different containers? No. no, because that's a tradition of man. Some demand that you use one container. Is that the truth or is that a tradition of man? That's it's, a tradition. Of man. it's a tradition of man so we have to be careful that we choose which one is the truth any thoughts or comments regardless of whether people use one cup or an individual cup it talks about and, and jesus says to drink you all of it a lot of people will say that you've got to drink it all that's not what it's talking about it's talking about each one of you drink of that cup well if, if if you look at most of the time the cup refers to the content yes it does not refer to the physical cup that you're touching <clears throat> because if it did then at only one person in the world could take it at a time well, and the thing about it is, how long would it take if everybody drunk from the same container? It would take it would take a while, but you'd never, be, you'd never be able to do it. But 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 Calvin and, and I'm agreeing with you totally. If God said that we had to drink from one container, we would drink yes. from one container. Yes. But he never mentions the container as being a part of communion. Yeah. But you all can't drink of one container because there's many congregations of the lord's church so there's many people so how can we drink of the same container that somebody in ohio or somewhere else drank of we can that's, right. that's the reason that's the reason i say that <laughs> if they tried it there's so many that you can't you'd never be able to get it done on the first day of the week. Huh? But, but you, you, you it, it actually would not be a possibility you uh -huh. must remember that each congregation and, is is uh, autonomous of each other and non-denominational so that means that means that well that also means if one congregation is wrong it doesn't condemn the other congregations right well so that's 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 a plan i believe that god put into place so everybody doesn't be condemned over what I, I don't do. condemn anybody that takes oh. one cup. Right. I, I have no condemnation for somebody that partakes of one cup. The thing that bothers me, John, is that they demand that we partake of one cup. Yeah. No. That's where it comes it comes into a problem. No, you can't. If people no. want to partake of one cup. That's up to them. But if one but it does show a gross misunderstanding of scripture. I understand what John's saying, except one thing I don't agree with. If if we, if a congregation uh, sees another congregation do something that they know is absolutely wrong, then it's the responsibility for us to bring it up. We don't condemn anybody. God does. No, I didn't. I didn't say that was wrong. I just never mentioned that part. I was referring to just a, a certain thing about the congregation. You can't hold one congregation responsible for what another congregation does that was uh, absolutely story. right that's you're, right you're right john because we're all autonomous every congregation functions on its own but again if one congregation sees another congregation doing something that's totally against scripture uh it's up to us to try to get to those people and teach them where they're wrong i agree yeah, yeah. but you know when you got a preacher who thinks he's right 
and I'm just um, a woman. I don't really have a lot of voice in the church. They won't listen to you. I tried it. <laughs> well, that's that's where you come to to one of us, and we can see what we can do. But generally, but churches we, can work together. Yes, they can and should. Under certain conditions, as outlined in the Bible, it's a pattern, and we, uh, hopefully, we'll get to that sooner or later as we go through. Um, so we all understand that we have to make that choice between God and man when it comes to authority. Yeah, we all understand that God has that authority, and man does not have that authority. Why does God have the authority? He's the creator. Yeah, that's it. He created all, it all belongs to him. So he has the authority over who gets to go to heaven and who don't, who's saved and who's not. So we basically have to check and see where can we find out what God says about everything that we need to understand. In the book of Hebrews, chapter one, beginning at verse one and continuing through verse three. This outlines and tells us what we have to use for our authority. It said, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke to in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his uh, son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Now think about it. Where did uh, Adam and Eve get their authority of God? God spoke to us. I got it straight from God. Yeah. Who did Abraham get it through? God. God. The prophets. God. The prophets were the one. It mentions here, and, and passed unto the fathers by the prophets. In other words, the prophets told the people what God's word was. Right. How do we get God's word today? His authority. The Bible. Or Okay, it says here, has in these last days spoken by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. Let's go on with it. Who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the world of, of his word of his power, uh, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down by the right hand of the majesty of God, upholding all things by the word of his power. And as Dylan just said, the word of his power is the Bible. So if we want to know what God says, then we need to turn to, turn to what Jesus Christ said, as delivered to us by the Holy Spirit. And it says, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So we're to a point now, we're not in the Old Testament times anymore, we're in New Testament times. So we don't listen to the prophets as to our religious, what we do uh, as far as worshiping God and being a Christian. People at that time had to listen to the prophets, the Mosaic law and, and so forth before. But now we're no longer under those laws. So we have to be under the rules and regulations that comes to the Bible, the word of God, ever what we want to call it. And Matthew chapter 17 and verse five, this is when they were at the Mount of Transfiguration in which they saw Moses and Elias and uh, Matthew, uh, not Matthew, I think it's Peter said, let us build three temples, one for Jesus, one for my, Moses, and one for uh, uh, Elias, who was the prophets. He yet spake, now this was he's talking about Peter. Peter was still speaking, and a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice of uh, a voice out of the cloud, which said, "This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him." What did God just tell them? To listen to him, nobody else. He's Who's the else? Going. The prophets. Man. Prophets. At that time, it would have been the prophets and Moses. Yeah. The Mosaic Law and the prophets before that. But this would also include man. Yeah. We are to hear God or hear Jesus and not man. That's what I said one day. I said if God would I mean if Jesus was going to be a 
different churches right there is where they've been set up. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the Bible tells us really not to listen to anyone else. Yeah. Uh, let's look at Acts chapter 4. And, and just looking at what it tells us here in Acts chapter 4, um, they told him not to preach anymore, not to preach in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. He said, be it known unto you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus, Christ, Jesus the Christ, whom you crucified, whom you raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before the for you whole. This is the stone, Jesus Christ, which made a, which which was set at naught uh, of your builders, which has become the head of the corner. Now listen to verse twelve. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we we must be saved. What's it mean when we say we're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? By the authority of Jesus. By His authority. This is the same statement here. For there is no other authority under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. So, all things go through Jesus Christ. There's no other way to find any other authority that can lead us. Um, and I think Peter passed on that authority in Acts 2.38 on the day of Pentecost. Do what now, John? I think Peter passed on that authority on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2.38, where he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive a gift of the Holy Ghost. What, what did Peter actually do that day, John? What was he doing? Remember Matthew 18 and 16? You mean Matthew 16 and 18? Yeah. Well, he uh, actually, uh, uh, I don't know exactly what you want me to. Uh, uh, Jesus told him on that day, and, and I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Oh, that's Matthew yeah, he, uh, he 16, the door, 19. He opened the door to the church. Yeah. So what was he, what was he doing on, on the, the day of Pentecost when he preached that sermon and told him to repent and be baptized? He was opening the doors to the church. Absolutely. He used the keys that Jesus Christ gave him to open the door because that's what keys do. So think about it. That was the only keys to heaven. So it had to come by the authority of Jesus Christ <sighs> and no other way could it be done. Thoughts or comments? Comments? The Bible also teaches us that Jesus Christ in all things is preeminent in other words he has the power over all things look at colossians chapter 1 verse 18 and he is the head of the body the church you know that's one there's a problem i have right there with people if you tell people that i'm a member of the body of christ and if you tell them i'm a member of the church of christ What's the difference? No. no. It's the same thing. But they'll accept body of Christ, but they won't accept church of Christ. And they he don't. is the head of the body, the church. The body and the church being the same thing. Exactly. Getting to the firstborn from dead, that in all things might have the preeminence. That's superiority. All authority. Then they'll turn around and try to tell you, well, the church is... The church is not a building, and I say, well, we, we knew that from the very beginning. You're just now learning that. And they don't understand that the church is not the building, and just because we say church of Christ, that is by whose authority? Yes, absolutely what we're saying. And uh, that they congregate or assemble here at this location that's all that's telling them absolutely john salvation cannot be had outside the head of christ no salvation cannot be held outside the body of christ no. 
because they go hand in hand together. You can't have the man without the plan. You can't have a head without a body. So it works together to function for us. When it says one body in there, it means one body. Absolutely. They'll, they'll turn around and tell you and say, well, my salvation is in Christ, not the church. <laughs> well, you salvation is in Christ. Well, they don't understand what they just said. You can't have Christ if you can't have his church. So what's See, the they're trying to, they're just, uh, you can't separate Christ and his church. No, you can't. But but think about what uh, the writer said in Acts chapter 2 and 47. Somebody knows that. And the Lord added and he added to the church those David. that should be saved. He yeah. was adding to the church all of the saved. Yeah, daily. Those so if you're not in the church, you're not the saved. They go hand in hand. There's no, there's no way to separate them. You can't separate. And you just, you don't just go out like they say and join a church. <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah. If the Lord don't add you, you're not there. Yeah. Don't you into the church either? Yeah. Well, if we want to know the authority of Christ, and we've already said this, but we're going to do it again. If we want to know about the authority of Christ. We have to go to Hebrews 1, 2, and 3. It says, upholding all things by the word of his power. And that's speaking of Jesus Christ. In other words, if we all his authority, all the authority that Christ has is written within the words for us to understand. Now, we also have to, have to realize that Jesus began to speak salvation. Back in Matthew chapter 7, verse 29 through 30, I don't know what I've done there. Let me go back and see what I've got there. That that's... Twenty-eight and twenty-nine. I don't guess I've got the scripture written down. All I've got is the scripture, not the words. Uh, but Jesus began, and this is Matthew chapter seven, verse twenty-eight and twenty-nine. And I'm, I left out the first part of it when I copied it. It says, and it came to pass when Jesus has ended uh, these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Do you know who the scribes were? They wrote down. They was the law. No, they were the ones under the Pharisees. The they documented everything, yeah. and they they trans they transferred the writings of the Bible because it's all done by hand. And they would take one version of the Bible, the version that they had uh, in the Greek or ever what they had, and they would write it over again and over again and over it again. That was their responsibility. So they got to the point that they thought they knew more than anybody else. And they probably knew more than most anybody else around because they wrote it over and over. Just think about it. If you wrote John 3, 16, a hundred times, you'd know it by heart. So everything else was the same thing. But it says Jesus has ended these things. The people were astonished at his doctrine for he taught as one having authority and not as a scribe. The scribes didn't have the authority. All they did was transfer it from one, from a Bible to a piece of paper. It goes on in John chapter 6 and verse 8. It says, Then Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Lord, said unto him, uh, To whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. This is back when he uh, got after the crowd for just coming to him because of the uh, feeding of the 5,000 and 4,000 and the, the healing. And they wasn't coming for the word he was speaking through gift that they got, but they come for the material things they could get. And when he kind of scolded them for it, they all left him. Then he asked Peter, are you going to go too? And Peter answered and said, Lord, whom do we go to? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And then in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, and I think these verses have to go together to understand them. You just take 
uh, verse 32, you've lost out on what the scriptures say. Verse 32 says, and you shall know the truth, the truth shall make you free. But listen to what he said pre to that. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So everything that we have here is contingent upon the word of Jesus Christ. Without the word of Jesus Christ, we have nothing that, that will help us. What will we be judged by? The word. What does everybody act like they want to be judged by? You know, that that's one of the verses that people really mess up with authority. Because they said, you can't judge nobody. And that's when they don't read the whole thing. He said, make a righteous judgment. How do we make a righteous judgment? By reading the Bible. By the word of God and the word of God only. Done. It won't. It can't be by your opinion. I mean, you might not like the fact that a man has long hair and, 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 and doesn't dress the way you want to, but you can't judge him on that because the Bible doesn't judge him on that. So we have to be careful how we look at people and think about people and, and consider what the truth is. John chapter 5, I'm, I'm sorry, John 12 and 48, Jesus said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my word, he has the he has one that judge him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. In other words, we will be judged by the word of God when that time comes. And when God talks to us about making a righteous judgment, He's talking about judging according to the word. John seven twenty four says, "Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment." That's right. It's judging by the word of God. Mm. If the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. Or the Bible says it's sin, it's sin. If we say that baptism is necessary for salvation, if a person's not been baptized, and they say they were saved before they were baptized, and we say what well, baptism is necessary for salvation, we're not judging them unrighteously. <laughs> we're judging them righteously because that's exactly what the word of God says. It says, whereunto baptism doth now save us. But most of the people that says judge not, they try to defend, but justify their sinful life. That Christ may do Well, that. they're talking about the wrong scripture. <laughs> but, but she's right. People who, who say you can't judge are really wanting to justify their life. Yeah, mm -hmm. their sinful life. Yeah. The, 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 they don't want to accept what the word of God says. So when you use the word of God in a judgment, they say you don't have the right to judge me. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? I'm not judging you. Uh -uh. The Word of God is judging you. That's what I feel. I ain't judging. Yeah, I, tell, I often tell Doris they they try to judge people that has a moat in their eye when they got a two before nurse. Yeah. <laughs> well, we just always need to remember that we don't judge people. The Word of God judges people, yeah. and all judgment is given to Jesus Christ. Through his word. Bible, John 5 and 22. If the Bible says sin, we have said sin too. Sin does not change. No. If it was sin in the first century, it's sin today. Yes, sir. For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. So, if we want to know what to do as a Christian, if we want to understand the authority of God, We've only got one place to turn. And it's not a Greek Hebrew lexicon. We can use that to help us, but if we can't see where it agrees with the word of God, then we can't use it. Yeah. It's not it's not some book that someone wrote. It's not any other source. It's not a vision that someone says they've had or a, a dream that they had when they visited God. We are to be judged by the word of God, and if we want to know what that judgment's all about, we have to look at the word of God. No yeah. other source. The scriptures contain God's or Christ's complete authority. Second Timothy three sixteen. I love this scripture. 
I, I, I love all of them, but, but in particular, the, this scripture is very, very strong. It says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Now, this includes the New and the Old Testament. Uh, we can look at a scripture like this and we can say, well, the New Testament wasn't written yet. Well, he's not just talking about what's happened now at that time. He said all scripture, and that includes any future scriptures that was written that was inspired by God. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And look at what it's for. And it is profitable. We can't look at any part of the Bible and say it's not profitable to us, including the Old Testament. It's profitable to us. It does not dictate what we do religiously. But it has examples and it explains a lot of things that we wouldn't understand if we didn't have it. So it is profitable. What's it profitable for? It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. What does the word perfect mean? Mature, mature Christian. Without blemish. It, what well, it means complete is what it means. So if we want to be complete and able to do good works, we need to read the word of God. Calvin, what do you, what would you have to say? If all scripture is profitable. That means all of those people that say that the Bible has error in it, that part of it wouldn't be profitable, therefore. That's right, it wouldn't be. wrong in what they say in that the Bible has errant scripture, errant words in it. If you have a Bible, and there are other versions that's written in the Bible. I, and, and everybody knows what I stand for as far as the King James Version goes. But when you have a version and you can look at it and show where it contradicts itself, there's a problem. There's a few key verses you can look in the Bible and then you can compare them to what was said in the King James Version. But you don't even have to have the King James Version to see that what they're saying is wrong. Um, there's a verse, and I can't remember exactly where it's at. I can look it up for everybody to have on Sunday if they want it. But it's back when Jesus was going to go up to the feast. Some Christians were there with him. And he makes the statement, I'm not going to go up there yet. And then later on, he goes up. Many of these so-called versions of the Bible or the newer versions leaves out the word yet. And Jesus said to him, I'm not going to go up. And then he goes up. What's that make Jesus? A liar. Absolutely. So if a version says that in it, it's a complete contradiction of itself. So we have to be careful what we what, what we read and what we look at. It's our responsibility to learn. I'm not sure what uh, book, and chapter, and verse it is, but I could I could find it later. But where it lists the sins, and you've mentioned this a lot, uh, Elias. And the verse where it talks about at the end of the list of the the sins that that he lists there. And such like. At That's Galatians the, chapter 5, verse 22 through 23, I think. Okay. Or somewhere in that area. At the beginning of that, where he lists those sins, uh, King James says, um, no, wait a minute, I'm thinking of a different, I'm thinking of a different place. It's in there somewhere. But anyhow, where it, it, it's in the same area, I believe, of what you just quoted there. Okay, Galatians chapter five. Um, when it talks about a widow, it talks about her having uh, children and nephews. Oh, yeah. um, and I can't think of what the word it is. I'm, I'm not getting That's confused so much. I just can't think of exactly what it says, but it, they changed the wording in that. 
it talks about children. It says children and grandchildren in other verses instead of children and nephews. Uh, that's in First Timothy. I think it's chapter four. Okay, but that's see they've they've messed that up too when they changed it from from uh, nephews to grandchildren. Yeah. The we we have to be careful that that they don't conflict. If 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 we find conflict in the King James version then we need to find something else. Yeah. There's no conflict there that I know of. Well, if there is, then, uh, then all scripture is not given by inspiration of God and profitable. If, if, it's, if it's wrong, it's wrong. And there's nothing, there's nothing in God's word that's wrong. Absolutely, you're correct. The word of God is perfect and complete. That's what this right here says, that the man of God may be perfect. In order to be perfect, we have to read that which is perfect. Well, I I done a little research on that, and they claim the American Standard is probably the closest to being uh, as accurate as the King James. But the King James is considered to be the most accurate, but not the easiest to understand. The American Standard Bible is easier to understand, but King James is more accurate if you're going for accuracy for the Word of God. I'm going for accuracy. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of people has a hard time understanding the King James. That's well, why they get away from it. Yeah, the, the reason I won't go for American Standard, that's man's word. That's not God's word. When they translate it the way they want it translated, then most of some of the time it's not right. Well, the, the new American Standard, that's not the case because it was taken from. Uh, the uh, written word of God through manuscripts that, that they found. Now there's just newer manuscripts. How many well, it would appear to me the older manuscripts would be more accurate. How many of different American standards uh, was written? I don't, I don't use nothing but King James, so I don't know. There's several of them, but they claim lately that the uh, new American Standard Bible is really good for people who don't understand the details but once they start understanding the word of god then if they want to go for accuracy then they can go back to the king james bible but for a, a young christian starting out the king james can be complicated for them well most people who complain about the king james complain about one simple thing the these and the thou yep and if if you don't have the these and the thous you're gonna miss the point yep yeah that's, that's the first thing that i researched uh, when i started using the king james bible is what was the reason for the these and the vows and the uh, they were talking to one individual person but when they said ye that means they were talking to all people it that's makes a how difference. They, that's how they said they were talking to. Them. And a lot of the translations don't translate them the way that uh, they were said in the King James. Yeah. So there's a problem. Yep. But we have a responsibility. Each and every one of us have a responsibility. And that is the responsibility to learn. Whether you learn by reading or learn by talking with people or learn by going to worship service and studying your Bible over and over again. It's our responsibility, each of us, to learn. And as we learn, it's our responsibility, too, to make sure the, the Word is being taught correctly wherever we attend services at. First Timothy 2, 3 through 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth you know a lot of places and, and I, I know of a, a denominational church i won't i don't remember the i know the name of it but but i won't mention that uh, but it was up at crumb and their preacher told him that they he didn't want it was that he didn't want them reading any sources outside the bible because they would only get confused does that sound like a problem? 
what? In other words, let me tell you what to believe. Oh, no, I would never do that. Never. Well, I hope you won't. That yeah, would make me want to do it more. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I think something was wrong there. What I, I read a lot of sor a lot of sources outside the Bible, and what I do is I use the Bible to compare those sources to see if those sources are telling me the truth. That's right. You don't compare the Bible by the source; you compare the source by the Bible. Exactly. The Bible is the truth, and everything else is leading up to it. It's, That's it's, how, it's, that, that is the primary way you can tell if a denominational preacher is fibbing to you or not. And, and I don't know where this is at either, Elias. It's uh, uh, let God be true and all men liars. Well, that's Doris's favorite verse. <laughs> well, uh, let's hope that all of us aren't liars. Well, we're, we're not writing anything differently than King James either. No. Our source comes from the Word of God. Yeah. As long as it does, we're going to be that we're going to be the truth with God. I've, I've heard it said that uh, in order to understand the Bible, you've got to use at least three translations. If we depend, if we depend on God as we study, as we read and study, meditate, pray, if we depend on God, we'll eventually get the truth. We'll understand it. You know what three translations will do for you? It'll confuse you. It'll totally confuse you. Uh -huh. I mean that's that, that's that's a crazy thought. You got to have three translations of the Bible. But that's not what they're talking about. They're talking about three, three so men. They're talking about you got to have at least two man-made translations. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because you got to have man to tell you what to say. Yeah. And although yeah. you know me long enough, you know this is one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. The new international. Done to God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And I've harped on forever. If you want to rightly divide the word of truth, you have to study. If you if you if you want to rightly divide the truth, you've got to have the truth. That's yeah. absolutely right. It all goes hand in hand, don't it, Calvin? That's hand right. in hand, all the way through. And Ephesians chapter five, verse seventeen: Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understand. What is the will of the Lord? Which, what is the will of the Lord is? The Church of Christ, and, and I, 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 I've emphasized this over and over again. The Church of Christ wants every member to be knowledgeable. Yep. They don't want anybody to follow a preacher or an elder, a deacon, whatever you want to call. We're not to follow those people. We're to follow the Word of God. And everybody that I know of as a member of the body of Christ are or there may be a few people I've known of in my life, there have been, that that don't want you to study to show yourself approved. They want to tell you what to believe, and, and we have some people like that. If you ever go to a place in worship where the person wants to tell you what to believe instead of showing you what the Word of God is, then you need to find the nearest door and go somewhere else. Or try to tell you that the Bible means one thing when you know positively that it means something else go talk to somebody and figure but now Darlene, i myself have looked at it and read before and i found out that someone else taught me and i understood better well i i would go to as i have done go to other people and clarify it to myself yeah. you know and i see no problem with that no. people that you trust yeah like you trust someone about the bible and someone tells you something, then there's nothing wrong with discussing that with someone else to try to make sure your understanding is clear. Right. I, what, I do that. I talk to Shelby all the time, and she sets me straight. I used to call Bernie Ray once a week when I lived up in Louisa and try to go to churches up there. I'd call him, me and him would talk for hours because I would yeah. be upset over something that was said or was done, and and. Uh, and I wanted to make sure if I was right or wrong. So I'd call Bertie Ray and he'd call Jesse J and we'd get on a big long conversation about it. <laughs> well, that's important to do. We need to always make sure 
and seek the truth. But always remember, and we've said this over and over again, I'm not the only person, we've said it over and over again, make sure that what you're being taught is according to the word of God. And that's where it's at. I don't care how, I mean, you could put a lot of trust in a person and they could be mistaken. Yeah. So yeah. if it don't yeah, sound yeah. right, if it don't sound right, question it. Don't question God's word, but question the teacher if that's necessary. Elias, there are 16 verses in the New International Version that not in there that's in the King James. Which one? The New 16. International Version. Yeah. Got 16 verses missing. Well, I can tell you what some of them are without looking because I've, I've, I've looked at that before. <laughs> uh, <laughs> confessions left out. I know that one right off the bat. Uh, in the book of John, there's some left out about talking about uh, these three in heaven, talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit being one. They're, they're, the, the, the NIV is really, in, from what I've read, one of the worst versions you could ever consider reading. It's one to go to the garbage as soon as you see it. Yeah. yeah. But now I'll tell you how they justify uh, doing that. They'll tell you that those scriptures are not missing. But they're repeated in another verse. No, they're not missing because they were not in the oldest manuscripts. That's why they were not in the NIV. That's what they'll tell you. But when you go to research the NIV, you will find out that a lot of their board's members were denominational churches and they've got one thing on their mind is to destroy the deity of Jesus Christ so they can tell people, well, you don't have to be baptized to be saved because you're saved before you're baptized and these scriptures prove it. The revised scriptures prove it. Exactly. They're uh, also, if you if you if you look at the NIV, and again, I lose, I forget where the scriptures at. It's in the Old Testament. But if you teach by the NIV, you can teach that a child is born in sin and going to go to hell. Born I, sin. Yeah. Do you remember where that's at, Calvin? No, but I can find it. If I oh, can. I can too. I can't find it right now. But uh, but if you use the NIV. The NIV actually says that a child is condemned to hell. Yeah. When it's born. In the Bible. Well, they it. like to use That's Psalm 51 5 too. And we know better than that. We know better. See, what they, they try to say that it's born in sin. Well, that's, what, that's what it says. Actually, actually, what it's referring to, it's been that baby's been born in a sinful, into a sinful world. The parents sin. Yeah, it's a sinful world. But they don't say it that way. Right. They imply directly that the child is in sin. So it's a problem. I'll see if I can find that. It is. It's uh, Psalms 51 5, and it says, That's it. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Conceive me, yeah. Now, what's the NIV say? I don't know. I don't. Hold on. Where's that at, John? That's Psalms 51 5. Can you get that, Calvin? Yeah, I'll get it here in a minute. Okay. That, that there said I was conceived in my mother's sin. Yeah. yeah. But listen to what the NIV says. 51. Psalm 51.5. Okay, I don't find it here. Okay. It's there 51, somewhere. 51.5. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Okay, what? Okay, the NIV. Okay, we are get in IV. And sin did my mother conceive. New international version. Uh, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. 
I see, can that's see what they're on the baby. Yeah. yeah. So for no other reason than that one verse, don't try to live by the NIV. <laughs> It's dangerous. There's a, there's yeah. a lot of places in the NIV that. There's, there's a lot of other verses that are totally. Yeah. I mean, you, you just know they're wrong. So it, a little, so. That's what God, that's what Jesus put around him as little children. He said, such is the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. It's a little child. Yeah, he says you must become like a child. Yeah. And he's talking about the humility of that child. If you don't become as humble as these little children, you can't go to heaven. How can you stand if you don't if you're not knowledgeable? Any other thoughts or comments? I'd rather read the King James Version. We That's all fine. agree with that, Scott. Yeah. We do too. Anybody got anything else? Next week, we're going to look at how to establish authority. Because we're at, at almost seven o'clock. Yeah. So next week, we're going to look at uh, how to establish authority. And, and some of the things we're going to look at, you've all heard before, it's, that's direct command, apocalyptic example, and a necessary inference. So, and we're going to be looking at silence of scriptures. Uh, we're going to look at aids and additions. There's a difference in those things. But that's what we're going to try to do next week. But before we leave, we need to make sure that everybody understands the necessity of salvation. So if you're listening to these words and you're not a member of the body of Christ or the church of Christ, then you need to be you need to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Not only believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God because faith is not enough, we have to repent of our sins. And once we've repented of our sins, we have to confess Jesus Christ before men which the natural step after that would be to be baptized for the remission of your sins and begin that journey to heaven. That's for the person who is an alien sinner who is not a member of the body of Christ. But in everybody's life, things don't go right. And sometimes we make mistakes and we fall away from God. We turn our back and do things we shouldn't do. If that's happened in your life as a member of the body of Christ, then you need to repent. Repent of whatever it is and ask God for forgiveness and he'll welcome you back. If you're listening to this sermon, you can call the phone number. At, uh, you can t tell us now, but if you're listening to this as a recording, you can uh, use the phone number to call uh, call me personally. My phone number's on there. Uh, or you can call the, the, the church number, which is also on there. And we'll see that you get in touch with someone that can assist you in finding Jesus. But if you're listening now and you need our assistance, let us know before, while we, before we close. This was enjoyable to me. I really enjoy the amount of people who, who get involved in the conversation. I think almost everybody did from one point or another. And I think that's what makes it Bible study because everybody has something to contribute. God, uh, the sermon that I done on Sunday, we're every individual person in this group, every individual person who's a member of the body of Christ is special and important. There's no big me, there's no big I, little you. It's all, we're all together in this thing together. And as long as we work together, we'll make it. Anybody have any comments before we close out with prayer? We uh, we received a call about 30 minutes before church started this season, our Bible study started this season, from uh, a new lady, she didn't leave her name. She wanted to know uh, uh, what time Bible study started tonight at church and i said well we're not having it at the church but i gave her our zoom information so apparently she wasn't able to make it but it seems like to me there might be a uh, people starting to be interested and in wanting to come back to uh to a, a church well we can discuss that we probably ought to wait till sunday when we've got other people there but uh with the way things have increased and everything, we might be able to come back on Wednesday night if everybody's in agreement with that. But I, I think we need to have everybody there and discuss our next step. And that might be, it might be time for us to go back to Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, 
We can wear a mask. Do what? We can wear a mask and we can wear our masks. Yeah, we could do 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 like we do on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, and since most of us have shots now, we still have to be concerned for those who don't. Uh, so we need to wear our mask because uh, we need to protect ourselves, but we need to protect other people also. So we can discuss that Sunday morning and, and decide what we want to do. Uh, and again, like I said, it's everybody's decision. There's nobody going to make a, a demand on what anybody else is doing. So uh, we can look at that Sunday morning and discuss that, and, and, and it might be time. Uh, our Zoom contract is coming up. Uh, it expires what, the 10th of next month or something, John? Yeah, I don't know, except sometime in that category. Uh, I don't want to waste money, but I think we probably ought to go ahead and renew it just in case. Does anybody have a problem with that? Why not wait and discuss it Sunday? Okay, we'll discuss that Sunday. Uh, I'm not going to renew it right now, uh, so I'll wait like for Sunday to do that because we've got, a, we've got two or three weeks before we have to renew it. So let's discuss that Sunday also and see how it goes. Anybody got anything else before we close with prayer? Brother Calvin, would you care to close us out with prayer? Our God and Father in heaven, we are thankful tonight that we've been able to come together and look into your word again. Help us, Father, to all think on these things that has been mentioned here tonight meditate and try to learn and understand more of what and where your authority is. Help us to continue to look into your word and look at those things and prove all things that are, that are right in your eyes. We're thankful, Father, that you are you and you have done for us what you have and that you sent Jesus, this world that he would die on that cross, shed his blood that we might have hope of eternal life when this life is ended. Again, Father, thank you for all things, all the blessings of this life, uh, especially those spiritual things. Thank you again and be with us. Help us to continue to meditate upon your word uh, as we live here in this, uh, on this earth. And now go with us and help us to continue to look to you for all things. Uh, and it's in Jesus' precious name we pray. And amen. Amen. Well, let's hope everybody continues to be fine. Protect yourself, wear your mask, keep your social distancing. And uh, do well. Take care of yourself. I love you, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.